guys and welcome to Microphone Check. I'm your host Monique Petaway and today I am in the beautiful downtown Mobile. This city has rich history, architecture, and a lot of hidden gems. These hidden gems that I'm referring to are entrepreneurs. These creative beings have created an opportunity for themselves and for others. I sat down with Kimberly Knight, the founder of Lush Consulting Firm, and she shared with me the importance of managing your time as a single mom and entrepreneur. Well, hello and welcome to Microphone Check. I'm your host, Monique Petaway, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Kimberly Knight of Lush Consulting. Kimberly, welcome to the show today. So glad to have you. How are you doing? I'm great, and thanks for having me on that, the show. That's awesome. So I want to go ahead and get started and talk about Kimberly. Okay. Who is Kimberly Knight? Well, Kimberly Knight is a mother, a daughter, and a wonderful friend of, of so many and uh, I have a lot going on I have a lot of titles so starting with I am a publicist um, that's what actually ignited Lush Consulting Firm um, I'm also a CEO of an active wear line for women uh, women of all sizes and colors from extra small to 4x um, I'm a graduate of Mattatee Blunt High School I want to throw that out there um, Hey, I wear many hats, so that basically signs, basically size Kimberly Knight up. Okay, well that's awesome. So Kimberly, you are the owner and CEO of Lush Consulting. Correct. So tell us how that all began and how you actually ended up being the CEO and owner of your own business. Well, um, of course I in corporate America, and while in corporate America, there was a situation that that happened where um, there we were being bought by another company, mm -hmm. and of course, in situations like that, it's all that. What if? Yeah. What if my job is taken away from me at this point because of this actual action that's about to occur? So this was 2017, and at that moment, um, it popped off as far as in my mind. What are you going to do if? You're mm -hmm. one of those individuals who lose their job. And I've been holding my degree in marketing since 2010. Of course, this was 2017, just a mm -hmm. whole seven years later. <laughs> and um, the type of things I do, I always support everything that's going on in the city that's ba basically, um, that's a, something that should be supported, I say that. And I'm always um, around at different events, doing different things as far as promoting for um, different people. So in this moment, I thought, I'm like, okay, I had this degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of promotion and things of that nature and in public relations field. And I said, okay, this is my opportunity to take a step out on becoming a publicist. So that's basically how I started Lush, just off of the fact that it was a situation where I probably would have been jobless. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't lose my job, thank God. I was able to finance Lush through that, but um, with, with that situation, it basically opened a third eye saying, okay, you can't depend on corporate America for everything. So you, that's you right. have to just leap out there. So basically that's how Lush Consulting Firm was established. Okay. So as a female, being in the industry, mm -hmm. you know, being an entrepreneur, and but particularly a female, what are some of the challenges that you've seen as you've tried to forge ahead and, you know, breaking, you know, barriers for women? Well, the main challenge is, of course, that we're females for one, mm -hmm. and everything is a male dominant thing no matter what the actual industry is, whether it's public relations, whether it's promotions, marketing, whether it's clothing, men always try to dominate. Dominate, yeah. But now it's, it's a different season and women are um, not facing that many challenges anymore when it comes to that. A lot of times the men are following us now. Hmm. So um, I haven't had many 
challenges since becoming an entrepreneur with that. A lot of actual men actually grasp to me and try to piggyback or, or see what I can assist them with. So I haven't had many challenges of that personally, mm -hmm. but I know they're out there. Right. Right. So what have been um, some uh, other challenges outside of the work industry, like with your personal life and having to juggle the two? Um, because I know you're still uh, working a full-time job right. and managing a company on your own. So what challenges do you see in that arena in terms of barriers? Well, time management, because of course I'm working a, a nine to five, that's eight hours in a day. Mm -hmm. Plus when I leave there, I'm going to put time into my businesses. Right. Plus I'm a single mother. So, and my daughter, she's in dance. She have different extracurricular activities going on mm -hmm. after school. So um, time management is one of those things where it can be challenging mm -hmm. try to try to juggle all those things. But consistency and organization is what makes all of that come together. Right. So what is the best piece of advice that you would give an up and coming entrepreneur um, who's wanting to go in business for themselves? What piece of advice would you give them today? I would say just do it. Just jump. Um, and when you find that purpose that you have, that thing that you have that you want to go after, you should be consistent. Stay mm -hmm. on it. It's not going to be easy. Um, there are going to be situations where you have that thought in your mind, you may want to give up, but mm -hmm. you just go, pray about it, and you basically keep going. Um, anything worth having takes hard work, and it's going to take consistency. With my clothing line, I started that in July of 2018. Of course, I have not reached my mark of where I want to reach yet at all. Right. But because of the, because you have spells, you have droughts where people buy here and then it'll be sometimes when people don't buy anything mm -hmm. and you're like, okay. But it just inspired me to keep being creative, keep coming up with different and new innovative ideas and just keep going. And when I do those things and I bring out something new and creative, people are all over it. So you just have to think outside the box and just do it. So not only do you have Lush Consulting, you also have another company called Queen Fit, which is your um, active wear. Talk about how you got started into that industry. Okay, uh, Queen Fit Active Wear, it is an active wear line for females. Um, again, size is extra small to 4X. Um, how I got into that, I actually was one to work out a lot. I did slack off a little because of business. It got busy um, with Lush Consulting Firm. It, it got extremely busy. So it kind of like put a downtime on my time going to the gym, but it was that point where I was ready to get back into the gym. And I was having a conversation with someone and it just the idea just came about. I was like, okay, it'll be cool if I can start an active wear line. And this particular person was like, you can start an active wear line. Mm. Come up with a name, come up with some designs, and let's do it. And basically that's what happened. Um, everything is designed by me. Um, everything that's designed is actually custom made. It's nothing that's just printed on from the color to the stitching to the actual design of it. Everything is done by me and my team. So this is one of those things for us, by us, um, I'm the sole actual brain behind it as far as mm -hmm. design goes. But um, I launched it in July, July 2018. And so I'm about to come up on a year and hey, it's been, it's been great. But as far as the, um, the brand goes, I, I started it because there is not many brands out there that actually cater to our culture. Mm -hmm. So when you actually see Queen Fit, um, you think about HBCUs because I have an HBCU collection. You think about Mardi Gras. I'm from Mobile, Alabama, right. the home of the Mardi Gras. <laughs> so I have a Mardi Gras collection. Just different things like that I try to focus on and be creative with to basically have something specifically for our culture. That's awesome. I'm glad you're doing that because we need more of that in our culture. Yes. When we talk about giving back yes. to the community, Talk about some of your give backs and how you give back to the community. Well, I give back in a number of ways. Um, as far as, I'm going to start with just 
people asking questions. That's a form of giving back because there are so many things that people are charging for now. You mm -hmm. have to charge, people charge for advice. Yes. Or they charge for consultations and things like that. So I'll start there first. Then secondly, um, I do help out with some of the nonprofit organizations here like um, the organization that's behind Alabama Hip Hop Week. They ha that's a non um, a nonprofit organization. Um, Captain Nolan Foundation. I actually assisted with their bike giveaway that they did during the holidays, as well as the college tour that they put on. Um, I helped with the event planning and organization for that, as well as they did a silent auction as well, mm -hmm. and also the annual football camp that he has every year. Um, also with Alabama Hip Hop Week. Um, they actually do something every year. It's a whole week of activities. Um, mm -hmm. We do something for the homeless, um, awesome. domestic violence, um, do wow. something in the park with the kids. So there's a number of things I do to basically give back um, in some form. Uh, right now, we're actually working on doing another college tour um, in March, um, taking the kids to Atlanta so they can visit Morehouse, Spelman, Clark mm -hmm. Atlanta, all those parks. And we're going to take them to the Civil Rights Museum. So... Um, those are my forms of, of how I like to give back. Recently, I didn't have enough time to market it like I should have, but also with the Mardi Gras collection, which I'll do next year, um, I'll do the bead buyback with my Mardi Gras collection to give to the students awesome. at Augusta Evans. So yeah. that's a number of ways that I try to give back. I, I do want to do more, and right. I pray that at when I get that to that level, I actually be able to do a lot more, but... Uh, for as now, I try to do anything I can to help the community. That's awesome. Kimberly, thank you, thank you so much for sharing with us your journey today, no your business, and all the things that you're doing for this community here in Mobile, Alabama. We are grateful for your support. Tell our listeners out there how they can get in touch with you. Okay, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Kimberly Knight. Um, my Lush Consulting Firm page is Lush Consulting Firm, both on IG and Facebook. Also, Queen Fit Activewear is the same. Facebook, Instagram, Queen Fit Activewear. Queen spelled K-W-E-E-N, Fit Activewear. Awesome. Thank you again, Kimberly, for being on the show today and sharing with us your journey. To our viewers out there, thank you so much for tuning in to Microphone Check. I'm your host, Lonnie Petaway, and thanks for tuning in. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's show. I want to give a special thank you to Kimberly Knight for sharing with us her business and her journey. And for reminding us to step out on faith if you want to win in this journey. Tune in next time to see what hidden gems we'll uncover. I'm your host, Monique Petaway, and thanks for tuning in to Microphone Check.